Hey, what's up? Welcome to Tutorial Thursdays. So much more to that, and that's like step three or four, and you need to take care of step one or two. So this one's a fun one. Uh, it's an effect that I've kind of shown a little bit in the past, but it was like years ago. And although you can still follow those steps, that scenario for that short film that I made a while back was very, very complex. So I think that this example is just gonna be easier to follow. So it's just very simple. The effect is a person just sliding off a cliff or falling, or you can even adapt it to the superhero landing type of effect. Essentially, it just depends on how you're acting out the uh, the second part of it so let's jump in and let's take a look at how we can do this so I'm gonna grab the two clips that we need to pull off this effect and I'm just gonna make a copy of them and then I'm gonna dynamic link those new copies into an After Effects project file and the reason why I'm doing this and duplicating before dynamic linking into After Effects is because I want to make sure that I have a backup copy of my footage still inside the Premiere Pro timeline just in case anything happens. Uh, I've had some times where just mislinked or some random glitch. So after that, I've just always made sure that I had at least something to revert back to. Another nice thing is that once you've dynamic linked into After Effects, you can always go back into the Premiere timeline, any timeline, and copy certain clips, certain audio files, whatever is in there, and paste it back into After Effects. And it's just gonna automatically import that clip or that media, and it will place it in the current composition that you're in. So that's super handy because in this case, we just needed this uh, extra plate that I got of me jumping. And we're gonna need probably about a frame or two of, of this movement. So I'm gonna start by rotoscoping this frame out. And essentially this is gonna be the connecting point between the previous clip and the clip of me landing essentially. It's just gonna bridge those two moments in time. Kind of wanna have not just a still frame, but I wanna have one or two frames at least to play with to have a little bit of movement so it's not just a static object just flying in the air. So I just made sure that the mask adapted for that second frame. Now I'm gonna pre-compose this layer and I'm gonna make sure to move all attributes into that new comp and then I'm just gonna trim up to where that beginning and end of those two frames that I made are. Now you'll see why we had to do this in this step, but let's just uh, give a quick rough animation. So let's just animate the position, the rotation, and uh, let's see how that plays out. Maybe we have to animate a little bit of the scale. The more that we get a, a better idea of the animation, the duration, the more we can see how many frames we need, you know, how, how the puppet tool animation that we're about to do if someone's falling, how much arm movement do they actually have? And then you can always toggle the motion blur just to see how that looks. So now that I've done the animation, I see that I need a couple extra frames. So I'm gonna right click on the composition that we made earlier and I'm gonna enable time remapping so that I can stretch out those two frames a little bit more. So now aside from adding movement to the actual fall, another great reason to use the puppet tool is to connect the play of you falling to the actual you falling a lot better because now we can rotate the limbs, we can move stuff around to match with how I'm landing. So you can see here that I'm, I'm really having to push that arm down because I do start with it up, but when I land, it's, it's kind of slamming down. We wanna follow that movement as much as possible with the puppet tool and animating it. And, and by the way, whenever you just click and use the puppet tool, it automatically creates keyframes. So any movement is already just gonna make keyframes. So all you have to do is just move the pins around, which is really nice. So now that we've matched the movement of the landing, we can get rid of the initial part of me jumping because we just wanna see the play of me falling. So to do this, I'm just gonna save a frame that contains most of the cliff side and I'm gonna save it as a Photoshop file. Then next, I can find that file in Finder and open it in Photoshop and from there, I'm just gonna make a very rough selection around me and I'm gonna apply a content aware fill to that selection. And this is like Photoshop magic. What it did for us here is that it just got rid of me and now we can just see the, the rock side of the cliff in just a very quick and easy step. It's not perfect, but for what we need it for, it's great. So I'm gonna drag it back into After Effects and I'm just gonna place it above my landing footage and I'm gonna create a mask and feather it out for just that area. Then next, I kinda of have to roughly match the movement. There's so much motion blur that I can be really rough with it. I don't have to do a motion track or anything like that. It's for a few frames, so I'm just gonna animate the position and then I'm gonna have it fade out 
so that we can reveal the uh, the me landing on the ground. Now, another issue that we have with the play of me landing on the ground is that it's it's not really, I'm only jumping and there's not enough momentum from the jump for me to actually slam down hard enough. So to fix that, we have to right click on that layer and we're gonna go under time and enable time remapping. And essentially what you wanna do is you wanna create a keyframe in the point in time where you make contact with the ground. And then another keyframe in the point in time where we don't see that plate. So then all you have to do is just push the keyframe of the point of contact and the landing closer to the other keyframe. And that is essentially gonna speed that part up, allowing you to have an extra bit of punch to that impact with the ground. All right, and one last final tip that I'm gonna throw in there just to add more realism. In this specific shot, you can see that there's quite a lighting change from the top of this kind of cliff side to the very bottom of it. So all I have to do is just duplicate the pre-comp that contains the me falling and then in the upper copy, we can just put a exposure effect or any kind of adjustment that you need really. And then we're gonna create a circular mask or a mask that can fit the area of where the sun or most of the brightness is coming from. And then once we fade that out, you can see that it's only affecting me falling off the cliff. And then once you fade that out and it matches with the bottom plate's lighting, since that's where I jumped, it's, it's all very seamless if you just add this one added little step all right, I hope you enjoyed all of this and I'm sure there's plenty of uses that you can use this effect in. So I, I hope you got some value out of this video and definitely tune in tomorrow because I am posting the first uh, Q&A in a while. It's pretty epic. I don't wanna overhype it, but it's not just a, a regular Q&A, hopefully. Hopefully it's a little better than that, but you know, tune in tomorrow and find out. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Carr. I'll see you tomorrow.